This video is brought to you by Technically Not a Technician, and in today's video, we'll be doing a demo of my modified Asteroids Arcade 1 Up cabinet. Those of you who have followed the channel may have seen the first demo that I did of my modified Asteroids cabinet. I did this first mod in hopes of landing my F 16 on the aircraft carrier in the classic NES game Top Gun. However, even after hours of trying, I never landed it. I digress, but the important thing to take away from that is that I felt I could do better with this mod. I, like many of you, want the most bang for my buck, and in the end, for this unit and for myself, I've done a redesign with a trackball mod. Of course, you can still play Asteroids and Asteroids Deluxe, but with a trackball, you can do so much more. I picked a trackball for this unfinished mod mainly because I hadn't done a trackball mod before, but also because I wanted something I could obviously play trackball based games on. I also have a secret yearning to play and own a very rare arcade game called Quake ATE, or Quake Arcade Tournament Edition, and with a trackball and the right configuration of buttons, you can also play a great deal of PC-based first-person shooters from the late 90s and early 2000s as well. This combo gives me the most value for my money, and I'm also a bit of a sucker for those types of games from that era. One important feature I like to have on all of my mods is for the unit to stand on its own and not need the help of a keyboard or controller. In short, I don't feel as if my mod is successful unless I'm able to boot the arcade, control and select any game on the menu, exit the game back to the menu, and exit the machine by powering it down. I am happy to report that this cabinet operates just like that. In its current design, this mod consists of an arcade one-up cabinet, obviously, but I've replaced the control deck with a modified deck that's designed similarly to the one used on the Quake ATE cabinet. This was done because the button placement is very close to the WASD layout on a keyboard, and the new button placement kind of works with asteroids in general. The deck does use a zero delay encoder and a cost effective trackball that acts as a mouse. The computer running everything is a free e waste gift, with an old i7 and 8GB of RAM. The unit also has an old Nvidia GT730 video card and an SSD hard drive. As far as power management goes, I've installed a hardwire switch and outlet in the back that will distribute power to the computer, my monitor, and any other electronics that I wish to power up. This unit also has the standard video and audio adapters. For software, I wanted something as lightweight as I could get, so I've downloaded Windows 10 Enterprise, which is a server-based version of Windows and uses fewer resources than other versions. I'm using MAME for all of my arcade games, and if you haven't seen the videos of the Quake ATE software, then let me just say that, after a ton of modifications, the Quake Arcade software is a standalone installation that works as close to intended as I can make it with very few features missing. I've also installed a few other PC games to experiment with, and I believe I should be able to place arcade rail shooters on this unit and maybe light shooters also. All are controlled with the trackball. The truth is, configuring tons of software to work as one can be tricky, but I'm confident that as a proof of concept, this system works well. For the front end, I'm using a tracked mode. A tracked mode comes with a learning curve, but it works with any emulator you throw at it, and I love the price. In truth, this cabinet isn't 100% done. I still need to clean up the wiring for the interior of the cabinet, and now that I have the controlling software working as intended, I'll be able to add and configure the games to work quicker and easier. The unit is designed to be powered on from the switch installed on the back, and when power is applied to the PC, the BIOS is set to boot the computer. Once booted, Windows is told to start a tracked mode and another program called Antimicro. Again, a tracked mode is a front end, but Antimicro is a free controller to keyboard and mouse binder. The only issue I've found is that now and then it needs admin rights, but it works well and is simple. After the arcade cabinet boots up and enters a tracked mode, you simply use the control decks up and down buttons to navigate the menu selection, and when you selected your game, you just hit fire. If you wish to move from one menu to another, you hit one of the left or right buttons, and you are moved to the next menu. Again, use the up and down buttons to pick your game, and when you're happy with your selection, hit the attack or fire button. This will launch your game. Once you're done with your game play, you hit both the player and coin buttons at the same time, which kicks you out of the game and back into a tracked mode. If you wish to exit a tracked mode and shut down windows, you simply press the player key once when in any of the main selection menus. When you do this, a submenu opens, asking if you wish to exit with a yes or no option. I use my forward and back buttons to navigate this section, and when I'm on my selection, I hit the coin button to activate its action. 
This action takes me out of the Attract Modes kiosk interface and back into Windows, where I can use my trackball and attack buttons as a mouse and simply navigate to the Windows menu and shut the system down. After the unit is 100% shut down, I also physically shut down the power running to the computer by using the external switch installed on the back. This way, when I reapply power, the BIOS will turn the unit on, and it will boot into Attract Mode, and give us a clean Kiox look. Thank you for checking out this video. I hope you enjoyed it and found it informative. If you did, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. These are small clicks of the mouse for you, but they mean the world to this little channel. Thank you.